press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to NL Hafta. अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते वेलकम टू द पोस्ट होली एपिसोड ऑफ हफ्ता वी यूजली रिकॉर्ड इन थर्सडे टुडे इज फ्राइडे बट बिकॉज दैट जस्ट दैट मच ऑफ अ स्लेव ड्राइवर आई कैन बी आई फिगर दैट वी शुड लेट होली बी एंड रिकॉर्ड ऑन फ्राइडे सो दैट इज आई हफ्ता विल प्रॉब्लम अपलोडेड अ डे लेट वेन द पब्लिक पेज द पब्लिक इज सर्व वेन एडवर्टाइज पे एडवर्टाइज आर सर्व प्लीज पे टू कीप न्यूज फ्री सब्सक्राइब टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री वी हैव अ न्यू कैंपेन गोइंग मैं भी धोबी because as you know news laundry we do sabki dhulai we cleanse the news of any compromises that don't that aren't public interest or at least we try we may be screwing up sometimes and so our campaign is called maybe dhobi so subscribe to news laundry to hashtag maybe dhobi and chokidar will keep us safe and can the dhobi is keep us safe can we put that on our safe. twitter handle as well maybe dhobi yeah you can prove maybe yeah. dhobi we are all, all right. going to be doing that monday on just checking yeah we'll be changing our twitter handles to maybe dhobi it'll be a hashtag so today's hafta on the panel we have um madhu and manisha are on leave holy uh, the hard working people are here there is raman kripal hi hi raman hi there's anand vardhan hello maya mirchandani uh, a journalist long time you guys have known she is a senior fellow at the observer research foundation and she's also assistant professor of broadcast journalism and media studies at ashoka university in fact ashoka university has in a very short time what a spectacular reputation man people are like choosing that over going abroad yes. because they think it's the same value but i mean same um, prestige but uh, like one eighth the cost <laughs> so i know a bunch of people who uh, it's a wonderful there. university and it's a great academic climate i think there's a lot of people with great ideas and the students are encouraged to take us on when they don't agree with us which yeah, is a good we, thing we organized this thing called the uh, speak out it was a debate all india we mm-hmm. iims iits we yeah. you know went all over the country and got and the final six had a two or three ashoka students like it was 50% ashoka university and, and of course the winner was also a ashoka university student they're very well read basically yeah. i realized uh, maya has been a journalist at ndt for th- 25 years she's won the ramnath goenka award for excellence in journalism twice the reading award as well and the exchange for media broadcast journalism award and she hosts a weekly show called wide angle for the wire welcome maya mirchandani uh, thank before you before we go on the menu of stuff that we'll be discussing yeah. um caravan did a story on orf some time back <laughs> <laughs> What is your take of that story? Um since you wear I, many hats you're a professor you're a visiting fellow you are uh, you know a journalist who has a show and for someone who's uh, most most of your at least online life is spent trashing modi how does it feel to be called a modi um, kind of cheerleader image maker image that maker. was the cover yeah. um i was amused i think that was uh, it, it was so outrageous that uh, i could do nothing but laugh um as a story i felt it didn't tell me anything that wasn't in the public domain hmm. at all uh it essentially strung together a lot of different bits of information that are out there um and laced it with a lot of innuendo um okay we we, we shall ask hartosh his view when he's here next <laughs> and anand and hartosh are going at each other although anand doesn't go at anyone he just sits back and says okay say a piece in fact i have a letter talking about that so quickly i'll just go over the stuff that happened this week we won't discuss all of it but some of it narendra modi gets the varanasi seat again and amit shah replaces advani in gandhi nagar any idea whether advani stepped back or was he said thanks for coming but no thanks does anyone know or did he say i'm too old let no, me I not think contest. he's 90 plus so so i i i i mean I, common sense would say congress, that but the congress ha the congress is making an issue out of it but i don't see any but issue. you don't think arwani no. would be also interested in no, contesting no, at this no, age no. Mm. then yeah. the goa yeah. chief minister yeah. manohar parikar uh, passed away at a very young age at 63 and you know what was spectacular for me was how quickly you know he had a um, he had a really nice guy kind of vibe and there was something very upbeat and you know unlike when you, i'm not a huge bjp fan but they very dar sada hua people in bjp generally like he was like, pleasant and he was pleasant he was, he was nice, full of life and laid back he had that how the golden sensibility i suppose yeah that fun thing yeah. and suddenly when you see his physically i mean cancer just eats you up like that man what's well, a bloody sick disease here yeah. and i think it was actually to me my grandfather died of pancreatic cancer that's the same one that that's the same died. one many yeah. years ago and it it's an extremely painful form an aggressive form of cancer and i felt um just as a citizen not as a journalist or you know with any sort of ideological or uh, political inclinations i just felt that somebody who's that sick should be allowed to 
just spend his time with his family yeah. spend his time um, you know engaging in the way that he really wants to and not be paraded out with tubes in his nose and yeah, we discussed like that. that on the half time in fact just after I think it was just back. really really yeah, sad i mean i didn't um, i thought it was clearly just posturing i i didn't see what is the so other, important the other thing mm. and i won't be popular for saying this but mm. if i may um when um, political leaders die um the tendency to eulogize is of course of very course. strong mm. but i think in that eulogy sometimes we also miss the critique and the one piece that i think was significant and i i thought it was interesting uh, it was a piece by smriti kopikar in the quint mm-hmm. um where she did uh, an obituary an obituary piece about manohar parikar that talked about his personality and the goan sensibility and the fact that he was uh, polite and well liked by many people across political industries spectrum, political yeah. spectrum but you know he came from a particular ideology sure. and i i think the fa- that fact often gets suppressed mm. um because you know you just don't want to talk about unpleasant things when people in uh, fact, pass away in fact i think anand am i mixing you uh, you up with having written a piece or just spoken to me about this but you've written about after death you know one tends to or did we discuss on the hafta uh. that exactly this point did you write a piece on it or did we discuss on the hafta did- hafta 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 okay so um yeah but uh, yeah, the few obituaries you've written i think yours are fairly balanced maybe we should have tried that anyway parikar died and there was this power struggle even before mm-hmm. um you know his his mourning period was over you know not even a day after he died which was unfortunate but i think inevitable in fact the day before he died there were reports of how they were all lining up outside his house and yeah. um you know who was going to be trying to stake claim and sending letters to the governor and things like that so two media related stories one is barely a month after joining surya samachar editor punya prasun vajpay and his team are laid off they were asked to go uh, and if those of you who have been following this case of punya prasun would remember he was asked to leave abp news some time mm-hmm. back and before that he had made some accusations i think against his former employer in india today mm-hmm. um oh no he had made any accusations or he had said it's all good but there was speculation in the market that again he was too hot to handle and the other media related story is um the supreme court stayed the conviction of the shillong times editor in the contempt case we discussed this case last week and i'm so glad the supreme court had stayed it and i think that's an important development and yeah. i hope they reverse it yeah. because it's it's ridiculous uh, this kind of stuff and of course all the stuff that raman sir was saying on the circumstances under which that judge had felt contempt mm-hmm. is just ridiculous uh, judges are not gods then nirav modi arrested in london to be produced in court shortly so that is something that is really being tom tom ki dekho pakad liya nirav ko uh, then for arrested for harassing journalist barkhadat online this has also taken a another twist and flavor because one of the guys who had actually sent her the uh, photograph is muslim yeah and of course the writer saying dekho it was and apparently he said he got this phone number as a escort as an escort service. service that's right so i mean although i will say even with an escort service why I mean, would you do that yeah like what you said am i fit enough for your services i mean what what are you trying to show <laughs> the fuck like <laughs> that they have a minimum size like when you have to ride a, a ride in the us you have to stand you have to be taller than this to get onto that ride so he thought this i mean whatever but good i and i mean i think all the people who sent her those messages one by one if they get all of them it'll serve a lot of people right then mayawati rejects the congress offer to leave seven lok sabha seats rather hostile and angry uh, rant of hers which was met with priyanka gandhi's calmness no need to be angry our target is to defeat bjp all is well all is well <laughs> so uh you people be interesting a very good uh, i don't know whether any of you watched it there was a uh, chat about this on ndtv only with pranoy dorab uh shekhar gupta who was pelowing gyan in the middle but there was good stuff also between pranoy and dorab um about they showed the vote uh, share the swing yeah uh phulpur gorakhpur uh, you know the three by elections that happened last time what the vote share was what coming together of both the parties how it takes the vote share it just doesn't add the vote share yeah it takes adds there and goes 10% because that addition creates a, a, a momentum uniform swing huh that is called uniform swing uniform in, swing is matlab in cephalology 2 plus 2 yes. 4 yes means uh, that gains a momentum and multiplies ha huh. yeah. so they showed that so i mean even if there's a 5% swing yeah the on either of, side yeah on either side the amount of seats that will be impacted are huge 
Yeah, I think everybody is sort of making the observation that the the alliance uh, has created an energy mm. uh, on on the ground. Uh, but as you say, I mean, I think I think UP will be interesting. I think uh, Priyanka Gandhi there is a, a lot of it is great optics for the Congress. I don't know if those optics will actually translate into votes on the ground. Mm. Um, but I think she's creating enough of an optical sensation mm. uh, to make uh, many in the BJP a little nervous because even if I mean what I've been noticing with TV channels even if they're sort of attacking the Congress and attacking the dynasty and attacking what Priyanka Gandhi may be saying for her naivete or her sort of um, political innocence uh, whatever the fact is the pictures are still of her yeah so I think the image yeah, is sort of a, dominating I think it's uh, a, as a news point it, it gets you clicks yeah. and eyeballs as well yeah then the election commission has asked airports to share details of chartered flights and choppers. Sir, they should share it with us also. <laughs> we have done that story on uh, Piyush Goyal's use of aircraft yeah. and chartered flights. It was so difficult to get documents and stuff. If we do make it transparent, we will know who is going to go. Where is it going? to go? Where is it going? 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 Can I just say, I think the election commission is being very, uh, they're very specific this time also about what they're asking this is very interesting development ki, what choppers what aircraft you're using because it also tells you how the Indian politician has evolved it's mm. not just about Gadi and Rail Gadi it's mm. like plane and chopper right yes. where are you going with this but the other thing that the election commission has done which is interesting and I think they're kind of trying to come to terms is how they're going to impose the model code of conduct on social media I don't think they have a yeah. they, they've come up with some of these sort of rough guidelines but yeah. I think that's going to be the real thing to watch in this election. We is. discussed that last week mm -hmm. um, and we compared it to those the US committee that question Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. It was clear many of those guys don't understand the internet. They don't understand. So I think it's clearly many of the election commission people also don't understand how this works. So mm -hmm. they have expectations which are Unreal. Yeah, they don't. I don't think they understand what is a platform. They don't understand what is, the algorithm. They don't understand platforms. Don't understand they the, don't understand how this, you know, the networks are kind and of the numbers circulating and, and, yeah, the numbers. So, yeah. In fact, you're getting. I mean, I've been getting calls also from sort of different people in different tech companies saying, "Hey, listen, if you come across something, please just flag it to us because they're not being able to keep up." Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, um, the MNS has announced that they won't contest Lok Sabha polls. Um, okay, but I don't think they've won even a Vidhan Sabha <laughs> seat. MNS didn't win a single seat even the Vidhan Sabha, right? Not that I can I recall. Think couple of them. Sir, I Two think they were councillor. Yeah, I think they were councillor. Yeah, they were municipal corporation seats. Municipal corporation, municipal government. BMC seats, yeah. They did not stop. He was copying, what's his name? Modi, Mr. Raj Thakur, his speech was written. <laughs> and of course he's singing in Marathi I started to understand a little bit so this is like a formula one car. and he has this very tuchcha way which he's inherited from his uncle uh, <laughs> Bal Thakre Bal Thakre I mean he today you know when you see that film whatever what's the Thakre Thakre it's called sorry. Thakre is a very tuchcha type man he just was at the right place at the right time and he had this Marathi, you know, angst and he had convenient, you know, people to pick as 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 the victims of his onslaught, whether it's Tamils or Muslims or different people at different time. Although that film leaves no one. Have you seen Thakre? I haven't seen it. Basically, in that film, Punjabis are Chutias. They, right. are, they are mean to Marathis. Tamils are Chutias. They are mean to Marathis. Sindhis? Muslims Sindhis? are Chutias. I don't think Sindhis are Sidis. They, they didn't matter in his they film. They didn't matter? <laughs> Not in his they owned half of the real estate in no, South Maybe Bombay. they did. Basically, yeah. if you see that film, this Raut has produced it. Other than Marathis, every community in India are dicks. Yeah. Well. Now, mm. to, so to, to, for that to be your point of... And of course, he used to do a lot of this mimicking people and stuff. Bal Thakur. So anyway, MNS is doing this. I guess at least he can provide some entertainment to the tumbo full of people if he can't win a seat, so what? And then uh, Congress is... But that, that's a rallying cry across uh, majoritarian communities and majoritarian mindsets. I mean, if you... Um, I don't know if you've read a book that Arjun Appadurai had written in 2006. No, uh, it's called? called The Fear of Small Numbers. And it talks about a persecution complex that, you know, majorities in... So the Marathis are a majority in Maharashtra. Uh, so majoritarian play, majoritarianism plays out in different ways. So basically, it's how you say you have been deprived, you have been persecuted, but you're doing that in 
uh, a direct connection with another community. So they have got more than we have. And you identify who that they mm. are. Uh, it's a sociological or uh, sort, of, sort of phenomenon. And you're seeing it play out on a mass international scale today. Mm. But essentially, that's what it is, even with the MNS. You prey now, on... Although I, I, MNS I, would wish to be majoritarianism, if they can fill a tambu, they should be happy that, in today's... That is, that is a different point. <laughs> yeah. In today's day and age. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, coming to the Congress, uh, it seems BJP, um, TMC will go it alone in, in Congress will go alone in Bengal. In Bengal. It's not working out in Delhi. Mm-hmm. So clearly it's not working out anywhere. So uh, they are clearly one of the most inefficient parties in the world right now. They, they can't get I anything. I think that's, that goes without saying, yeah. Um, and uh, finally, I mean, I mean I'll mean, i I'll discuss that uh, a little later. Um, Shashi Tharoor has filed a defamation case against Ravi Shankar Prasad and the Kerala state BJP chief. I don't know whether anyone else is em- employed or not, but Shashi Tharoor's lawyers are getting a lot of employment in the last few years because he has filed cases against everyone from Arnab to Ravi Shankar Prasad and he's in, I think it's three, four cases is he and Arnab are going. And as it turns out, if you watch Hasan Minaj last night, his vocabulary isn't as good as he thinks it is. Oh, it's a rata rata hai hota, na? Ah, So he says, fight a clean campaign if you can. Congress MP Shaj Thiru filed affidavits in a chief judicial magistrate court against Bharatiya Janata Party leader Ravi Shankar Prasad hmm. and PS Sri Dharan Pillai from the, for the alleged defamatory statements against him. And what are those defamatory statements? It was about Sunanda Pushkar uh, again, so which even Hasan Minaj asked him about. Mm. So Hafta's free this time. It's not behind the paywall, but we've started a new podcast called Daily Dose. It's a short podcast that you for the daily news. If you just want to get, if you're like head, headline surfer and you don't really get into it like Hafta and find it too boring, Daily Dose is a daily podcast which gives you the news for the day. And also, awful and awesome entertainment rap has its own channel. So there won't be just one News Laundry podcast channel where all the podcasts will be there. For awful and awesome entertainment rap, there's a separate channel on all the platforms, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes. And three weeks from now, the podcast will only be available on their own channel. So you won't get it on this channel. So do subscribe to the Daily Dose channel, which will be up soon on some platforms. It's already up. And on Spotify, it's up. But it'll be up soon on the rest. And awful and awesome entertainment rap. Thank you so much. So I'd like to start with the New Zealand attack. Although it's not India-related news, it was big... And it caused, I mean, there is enough to take away from that, I think, for every country, for the US, for India. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard about this. Uh, The New Zealand, there was an attacker who was Australian. He went on this shooting spree and killed 50 uh, people in two mosques. I think he he invaded two mosques. Yeah. And uh, he also uploaded that video which many people actually were sharing on WhatsApp. Even I got it. He showed it live, I think. He live streamed streamed it on on, on Facebook. It was ghastly what he did, you know, people piling up and he's shooting them. And uh, a few takeaways from that. One was the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Her name is, how do you pronounce it? Jacinda or Jacinda? Jacinda. Jacinda. Jacinda Ardern. And her statement was amazing. This is us. Yeah. Mm. You cannot, it wasn't, I, I think it was brilliant. I think that is a template that all, all leaders, leaders should, should employ, take. Yeah. That that is how one should respond because you can't separate and especially country like India and uh, the second takeaway was how quickly they acted on gun laws which maybe the US, the US can take a few. could learn a lesson from, yeah. But, um, and I thought the, the coverage is also amazing the next day, you know, even if it's symbolic, white, Christian or other religions, New Zealanders making a chain around mosques saying you yes. pray, we'll guard you. Um, I think this really makes a society mm. um, better Um yeah, that's my view on it. I just thought that some, out of something so dark and ghastly, so many feel-good moments came out that it's not, you don't have to be so cynical, all is not lost. What do you think, sir? And what, what lessons should uh, Modi ji take from uh, Ms. Arden's statement? No, it was the chain of reactions. So, so it wasn't uh, just the political leaders, even the way the community had reacted to the entire thing. I mean, I specifically, you know, went to the, I mean, I mostly don't see the TV news. But then I, for this particular news, I went to all the channels and uh, absolutely great. I mean, and, 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 the, and the Prime Minister was f- fabulous. I mean, the way she reacted on the guns, mm. Mm. So it, was, it was really quick. And this is how, I mean, it's an example how to handle a crisis yeah, in a country. Agreed. So this is 
what I, this is my take anand sir response to it or the event itself whatever you want to talk about sir okay. i think uh, in a society like uh, new zealand's it is not a very complex society and uh, f- far less than even its neighbor australia mm. so uh, did they, they do any cleansing of any uh, you know in, indigenous tribe there anand would you know like australia wiped out the local aborigines new zealand had any such history or no no i think australia did new zealand, new zealand i am no not sure yeah, even i'm not i've never heard of any new zealand no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. so uh, i think uh, um, uh, comparing it with more complex societies would not be fair mm. because identity politics of different kind uh, exist in other complex societies new zealand has a more vanilla kind of uh, mm. f- um, this uh, so th- that is one thing second is uh, the uh, the nature of the shooting uh, though it had uh, a backing of a group a small group it was more of an unhinged individual hate filled individual with extremist ideology and mm. uh, targeting people uh, so i also find it a bit out of place comparing it with well organized other terror groups mm. you can always find even this pulwama attack had a hate video before it right. but it, but it couldn't be pinned down to an individual because he had the backing of a well wild terror outfit the nature of the killing was more of a kind of uh, regular uh, campus killings that one sees in us but mm. f- with far more uh, not a very psychological problem but hate itself becoming a psychological issue with him so i saw it that way uh, so um, though at psychological level the extremism was of terrorism but uh, uh, in terms of paraphernalia the organizational structure of uh, international terror hmm. it was not the same right so yes no my opinion um i'm not sure i entirely agree with uh, mm. that view um i think there it there is a resistance broadly um to use the nomenclature of terrorism for any act of violence that is not perpetrated by a muslim mm. and i think that's a problem that's a fundamental problem in itself um the the you know the truck attacks in france or the orlando shooting uh, that killed Uh, people in a nightclub in an lgbt nightclub in orlando uh, we have no hesitation calling those acts of terrorism because some individual who had access to weapons uh, or not in the case of a truck um, decided to go in and do this and an organization that the world is fighting chose to claim responsibility for it um just because an organization does not claim responsibility or there is no international organization i don't think we can be hesitant about using the language terrorism is an act of violence that is uh provoked based on what is an extremist ideology or an ideology that has a tendency towards radicalize and become sort of um a marker of of violence having said that had the new zealand prime minister herself not called it an act of terror hmm nobody else would have right and she I, did and she did and i think that's an important message um in the united states in i think it was november the attack on a synagogue in pittsburgh hmm. um it was called an act of hate uh, anti-semitic had that been perpetrated by a muslim it would have been an act of terror right. and i think that that is the fundamental problem and just as a corollary to that because it is an act of terror because the new zealand prime minister has classified it as an act of terror i don't think this conversation about uh, we shouldn't name the person we shouldn't give them a platform is okay because people need to know who the terrorists are hmm. and if it's okay to name Osama bin Laden and if it's okay to name Al Zawahiri and if it's okay to name Baghdadi or Masood Azhar it should be okay to name Tarrant hmm. he's One, a terrorist sure okay i Go. think yes there is no problem in naming him hmm. in fact his name will come out in fact people know his name and then hmm. there are many publications so hmm. uh, also uh, he is a non entity he is not that someone in, in that uh, new zealand should shield he is hmm. not that some uh, big, have an organization, big, big so shot his his name would come out i i'm not disagreeing that it is, was an act of terror what hmm. i am saying is that drawing the same parallel with organizational strength and this would uh, in terms of uh, the log- sheer logistics of it organizational yeah, I- 
structure. <laughs> I, I think I, these are two different things that I sometimes this... get merged. Uh, it's that I definitely do think that this should be called an act of terror. Yeah. And there is a tendency of not calling a non-Muslim, you know, mass yeah. uh, killing a terrorist act. Uh, But whether... I, I just want to say on the issue of logistics and, you know, the fact that there was no organizational backing, I'm trying to understand what was the organizational backing the, par- the, the truck attacker had in France or the Orlando shooter had. Correct. So what there are, was the exactly, organizational now, now backing? Now, there are many such cases which are like, for example, there can be a cause which is, let's take the Pulwama case. Mm. Although, in fact, there's an email on that which I'll read and I'll just come back to the Pulwama case. Uh, also, sorry, before I forget, uh, how could I, I mean, I was whining about this yesterday to a friend of mine and I myself skipped this headline, Karthik producer, you do not put this. The Samjhata Express blast. Mm. Everyone the all accused. Of Asima it, it is the big, others, yeah. And the fact that nobody covered this is shocking. But Raman Express, Saral, Express did. Oh, they did. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I was. I meant uh, 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 television. Uh, it was it, Times now, you know, covered a little bit, but hardly. No, but coming to that, you know, so there are many such cases where, um, like, for example, this guy who attacked, he may not be connected to any outfit, a terror outfit. But there are enough terror outfits that are fighting for the quote unquote cause of Kashmir independence so whether he is an official member of theirs or not that is the cause he's going for so one clubs him that he is part of a larger cause yeah larger similar for, for many you know like Palestinians for example I mean honestly uh, I, I think a lot of people and I've said this earlier on other issues but I'm sure uh, some people may hate on me f- on this there are bigger I don't think what's happening in Palestine is nice or good but I find many uh, people in this country outraging more about what's happening there rather than things in our own what's backyard happening in our, yeah. so I think there are certain causes that become so big that you may not be connected to them but if you carry out something in their name you are taken over by them but Jaisi Mohammed claimed the attack, attack oh did they? yes okay. for Pulwama but, oh, so okay. I think Pulwama is a little different uh, because there was sorry all, sorry may I just finish the yeah. thought? but the point I'm making is that um they uh, you know no one can actually connect these the the ones the white supremacists yeah to any organization that is actually doing anything of uh, of, well, of the sort so one can say that there are organizations that you know believe in this kind of an ideology but even if this person isn't connected to them that organization is not big enough to to swallow this it may not be hmm. but there are governments around the world that are recognizing these organizations exist hmm. the united kingdom proscribed an organization called national action hmm. in december 2016 they are a hmm. white supremacist neo nazi group the right. germans see neo nazis as a, a threat to um, a safe society um the united states is talking about how Um, foreign affairs had an uh, had an uh, an article by peter bergen if i'm not mistaken mm. in the november december uh, it was on their website so i don't know when it came but talking about the fact that since 911 there has not been an act of quote unquote jihadi terrorism on the main on mainland united states uh, but the bigger incidents of violence and terror have been committed by gun wielding white supremacists so i'm not saying that you know the the organization of an isis or an al qaeda is not important because it poses a global threat hmm. I'm, not, i'm you know one doesn't cancel the other out sure. i'm just saying let's look at it as well let's look at this as well and again just to, to, to sort of take on your point on pulwama the reason you know on pulwama a lot has been said a lot has been discussed this was a radicalized individual who went and did this but the nature of the bomb the nature of the assembly of the bomb required some sort of organizational backing mm. and a support system that allowed him to find the explosives to rent the car to uh, plan the attack to various factors so there would have been a support structure for him in which case there is an organizational linkage to be made so that's clear and jesh claimed sure. uh, responsibility okay. but but i think this it one doesn't cancel out the other so why can't we have both conversations ah, essentially you can't struggle mm. for uh, you know this uh, attack in new zealand just like that it was i mean even if it was a tiny step it was a tiny step towards mobilizing you know people over world over he he and he did it very meticulously he he came out with a some kind of i think he a had a 70 yeah. yes yes so so and and he did it and uh, live streaming i mean if you just look at the in, uh, you know entire incident 
what all went into this. Mm. So he also prepared it very well. So you can't shrug it off. And in fact, the other conversation about this, which we're not having, is the use of tech in this attack and social media. Mm. The uh, live streaming. The yes. live streaming aspect. I mean, ISIS has used uh, social media platforms to their advantage for the last few years. Uh, they produce propaganda videos that look like Hollywood movies, except they were real life terrorists and real life victims. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the production skills of those videos would put Hollywood producer to shame. Sure. And um, it took Google, YouTube, Facebook, I mean, they employed all their image rec recognition software to try and take down yeah, all this Yeah, they took down two million in a day content, and yet there were enough. And yet there's enough. Yeah. So, you know, what is the purpose of terrorism? It's not uh, only about trying to perpetuate an ideology. Uh, that ideology can be done by speakers, by politicians, by whatever. It's about creating fear in, in civilian societies. A, a terror attack the best description I have seen of it, I think it was on a podcast on, um, I forget which podcast it was. It is the most effective press release. Exactly. What a press release is supposed to do, we are launching a new product, you know, Apple is launching a new product, press release. It's spectacle. Or, so, a terrorist act is a press release that will get your you, uh, get, the call, get you on the you headlines, yeah, which is what headlines. other people do by making either you know means uh, location location uh, is important, date is even important mm. for that publicity, and, and then everybody knows what yeah. mm. So everyone knows what this guy's sure, manifesto yes. is today. Everyone knows you know. Yes. So so this this whole conversation about we was not give it a platform. I mean, yeah, I think it should be named. Sure, yeah. fair enough. And eventually it will find a platform and say, mm. you know, government, uh, it, these are not the times when government can uh, suppress seal his name. Names, yes. correct. Um, so I'll just go with a couple of emails and then we'll get back to, we'll get back to the Samjhota blast. So you guys can just quickly read up if you want on this because I hadn't included in the first list. I'll go over these two, three emails. So this email is from a, a lady who is a PhD Student, what is PhD? Student. Yeah. Researcher, yes. PhD Researcher. So, uh, research scholar. Research scholar. So she says, Dear News Laundry, first, congratulations on being among the few sane news related outfits in the country. Keep up the good work. I was introduced to News Laundry when I chanced upon Sumit's cartoons on Kashmir and Naxal Bari a long, long time ago. They were exceptional. Some of your best work till date, despite occasionally watching a few of your interviews. I only got hooked to News Laundry when I started listening to Hafta and it took me a while to figure out it existed. I soon started subscribing and it went behind the paywall, though you put it out in a few weeks anyway. Why? Content archive can be a good subscription hook. Actually, that time, uh, doctor, doctor, I'll call you doctor even though you're still studying for a PhD. Um, our uh, payment gateway wasn't quite effective, so many of our subscribers won't be able to access it, so we took down the payment gateway for a while, but it's back up. Like many of your subscribers who end up writing to you, I'm a PhD student in the US, Depart in the US perhaps Hafta's comfortable banter format appeals to our loneliness. Actually, context for you, uh, Maya, we, a very disproportionately large amount of our subscribers are PhD or postdoctoral researchers, so I was wondering why. So her thesis is that because we have very lonely lives, and we are doing so much of research and studies. Your comfortable banter it's nice is nice to like have a, a conversation. Yeah, you're a conversation. Again, like many of you subscribe, I think Anand Vardhan is a star. Yes, I do too. How did you <laughs> join NL? I mostly have been paying to ensure Mr. Vardhan is more than accidentally paid and continues to be part of the news on team in the hafta. <laughs> Shout out to Abhinandan particularly and the whole NL team for cracking the podcast space. Congratulations, Karthik. I know NL does more than hafta, but this is really the best bit. Before I go on and uh, just quickly touch upon some of her sub suggestions because it's a 1,164 word email. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, how did you join News Laundry, Anand? You were one of the founding team, I remember, because when we started NL, you joined and then you went and I don't know, you started yes, teaching I had while? just failed in my last attempt at civil services examination. Instead of news laundry, go chalo. In failures, go join karte So I was looking out for a job and then I joined. Yes, because Anand came, actually, you were here for a year? Yes, then? yes. Sir. For about a year, just and over a year? after that, one year more of freelancing for you. Yeah. Before joining back in 2017. Right. Anand the original team. Then our PhD scholar says that Hafta is very well done. She says that, you know, our podcasts are good. Uh, her concern is that trying to do too many things, we will compromise podcasts, which is our real strength. main, yeah, our strength. She says our podcasts are probably the best in the country. She says the NL Sena is a good idea. But um, anyway, there's just too much. She says she's not complaining, but 
uh, your role as media watchdog for contemporary weekly news is mostly taken care of by hafta charcha podcasts are currently your strength do them well i'd wish that your one weekly article as media watchdog would focus on old news with kaveri quality is there an old news report that you can dissect for quality sanity and follow up well uh, you know it's a difficult one to decide which news we choose to dissect i mean if there's an obvious one like a pulwama attack hmm. then we can do a critical piece of how everybody covered it yeah but any week that doesn't have a big event which news do we really take apart is a difficult one but yeah newsons does that and then uh, you know she has a couple of ideas of how we can engage with our uh, subscribers she says have a chat like slack uh, and zulip for subscribers actually you know you'll be happy to know or maybe you'll just get annoyed because we begin making these khali pulaos our new website which we want to get up and running as soon as possible it will have a separate chat room for subscribers where you can interact with the team of news laundry so uh, it's going to be a little bit complicated because that will be available for only the top level of subscriptions uh but the tech of that uh, needs to be taken care of so that our subscribers don't have a terrible experience so yeah we we're planning that so we don't have to you know make whatsapp groups but also what we're doing is we're making whatsapp groups um across cities because you want to do a lot of events where manisha um, madhu me anand raman sir we can come and have haftas in your towns live you know with interactions with the subscribers so let's say we do one a month in a different city we just trying to get all that done it's hard but yeah just letting you know and another email from shurveer singh Hi for the love of god please get your shit together news laundry i was trying to find naxal episode on let's talk about and there is no trace of it on the website or the app the only way to find it is to google it and then get to the link the same is true for many hafta episodes it's almost impossible to find the amazing podcasts you record like a treasure hunt that you don't want us to find if the app is buggy at least get the episodes on the website i told a friend about news laundry podcast and he couldn't find it and he gave up it's very discouraging for potential subscribers to do do so much to get su- to get like potential subscribers and then you know not being able to find it so shurveer thank you so much for support thank you for your tough love appreciate it i just checked before this when i got the email it's working on the uh, on the browser it's on the top right when you click on that podcast logo that that mic there's a drop down and all the podcasts come and if you click on any of those all the series are there yes it doesn't work on the app but just check again i think the um, the browser should be working absolutely fine because we have worked over the last 2 weeks to make sure that it's robust in some browsers it wasn't getting updated hafta specifically the rest were but it should not be happening anymore but yes like i've always promised uh, this this has been commissioned we're already on it so it's no longer a khali pulao the tech will be sorted soon and um, just one more email then we'll just get to the samjhota blasts this is from subba rao abhinandan I was quite aghast at the way you brushed away the demand of Kashmiri newspapers for newsprint. It was unbecoming of a good journalist which I believe you are. As long as Kashmir is a part of India, they have every right to write what they like as long as they do not promote violence. You are the last person from whom I expected this type of comment. They are entitled to newsprint subsidy like everybody else. You had a lady reporter in Srinagar some months ago. She used to write good articles and gave good grip of ground situations in reporters without orders, which is one of our book good podcasts. he puts our because he's a subscriber thank you i i love your attitude of considering yourself as a part of news ronnie thank you subba where has she disappeared you should find a good resource to tell us the real story in kashmir please clarify incidentally am i supposed to put my hand on my heart and shout i am a subscriber every time it should be easy enough to verify your subscriber database keep up the good work thanks subba kartik uh, you verify the emails right so yeah you guys don't have to say whether you subscribers or not all the emails are verified and only the subscribers emails find their way uh, kartik sends them to me As far as our Kashmir reporters concerned, yes, she was very good. She had gone to study. She got a admission in some fancy Netherlands. Netherlands in the Hague. So she did her course. She's back, and in fact, she's back in Kashmir, and she will be reporting for us as a freelancer during the election. But yeah, she had quit her job and gone for a one-year course to Europe, and hopefully now she'll be uh, freelancing with us. She has to submit her thesis. and after that we hope she'll finish and come back and we can hire her uh, and let's see if that one year in mm. europe has done any good <laughs> or oh, is she as as good as she was she is, she is no she was very good very i mean good. i personally she don't know what good. europe will do but i guess it's an experience so yeah but thanks subha thank you for your uh, kind words and thank you the phd scholar who doesn't want to be named um, i have gone over your all 1200 words of yours and very good feedback and suggestions And of course she says that subscribe for 2 years a woman if you still keep keeping track of that yes we are keeping track of that and we still have way t- 
more men subscribers than women but yeah we'll be correcting that hopefully so let me come to the samjhauta blast uh, i'd like to start with our guest bit of context in 2007 there was a bomb blast on the samjhauta express the samjhauta express as many of you know was the train between india and pakistan and um, what was the exact number of casualties let me just 60 or 60 63 67 or something yeah. so one of the most high profile um, people who was actually accused was asim anand who um, has given a on record interview while he was in jail uh, pretty much saying that this is what he did which was also done by caravan incidentally but there were one of the few times where they got it straight from the horse's mouth um he's been let off as is everybody else so as of now no one did that um now i don't want to you know talk about whether it is fair or not or everybody goes on about when the judgment works in your favor the courts are good when it doesn't the courts are bad of course that line of argument completely ignores that the judicial system the most important aspect of that is not the judge it is the prosecution hmm. and the prosecution doesn't want to present evidence that supports them not even the best judge in the world can give you a in fact i think that's what the the judge also said that the the burden of proof had not been uh, yeah uh, i mean submitted I, substantially I, or something like that that the evidence did not hold up and it's a lazy foolish which comment which i i yeah. see made so yeah. oh so now you don't believe the justice the judicial system i mean the same judicial system may found jessica lal's murderer guilty and not guilty yeah. so what suddenly it 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 is only when there was a bamboo on the police that then they said okay we'll present proper evidence now so and that's that's uh, it shows a lack of understanding of how the courts the work the courts work yeah but uh, how big a deal is this and does this actually at the risk of being branded anti national actually why the fuck should we even get defensive about that hmm. fuck that isn't this a really good opportunity to use samjhauta to actually show pakistan down saying see our systems work yours are the ones that don't because that video going around of that young boy with his face completely burnt in mm. pakistan who mm. says i was not called uh, i can identify uh, you know who all boarded or didn't board the train i was not called to give testimony mm. and he's sitting there in pakistan i mean it's he looks like an acid attack victim his face is completely there's no face yeah it's just this skeleton with skin on it um but he can still see uh, he wasn't called so do we give away an opportunity to take the judicial high ground or moral high ground my please start it's uh, a tough question i mean i i covered the the aftermath of the samjhauta blast in in delhi and i've been sort of tracking the investigations all these years um you know it's I don't know what the NIA did or did not do ultimately when they sort of closed the case um but if they did not speak to this no, individual right. in Pakistan if they did not reach out then I think you're not speaking to eyewitnesses is fundamentally a problem how do you how do you close an investigation without doing that um I think the bigger concern is that the you know the timing of this uh, acquittal um so close to the elections is also going to play into the hands of political parties right now you've already had comments from uh, uh several senior leaders of the bjp say oh so much for the bogey of uh, hindu terrorism that the upa had been talking about um this in spite of makkah masjid in spite of the bangalore blast in spite of samjhauta um i think i think those you know it it's a tough one because the fact that these people have walked away in spite of the interview which as you said um he virtually said that this is what they've done what what should we make of our systems i think that's the bigger question i mean do we want to become a system which where nothing works nothing can be trusted no institutions can be trusted um but are we that do we want to be that i don't know anand uh, also sorry i'll just give the numbers a total of 43 pakistani citizens were killed 68 people were killed in 2007 and and what yeah and, uh, sorry the it happened uh, the case happened in the panchkula nia court yeah. and there was a deposition of a woman in pakistan um who said that she can give evidence and uh, it, it it wasn't taken on board and she was not among the 13 witnesses you know also the other thing the fact that uh, i think you raised this earlier when we started there's been virtually no coverage of this acquittal yeah. on yeah. 
uh, television news channels. I understand that we're in the midst of an election cycle. Mm. I understand that, you know, ticket allocation is important and political alliances are important and things like that. But this was a really major terrorist attack and it took place inside Indian territory. Mm. Um, just on off the border now are we saying that those 68 lives didn't matter you know to mm. to, to anybody it, the fact that this case has been closed should it not merit a discussion that what happened to the investigation over all these years if these were the people who were suspected to be the masterminds of the blast where did the investigation go wrong um, or what did you base that suspicion on in the first place it's almost as though these lives don't matter. Now, I mean, can I make a really, really controversial statement and ask, do, does it not matter? Because these were a bunch of people going to Pakistan anyway. And, you know, so mm. in our current climate today, well, why were they going there? So how do they, how do they matter? Yeah, I mean, of course, and th- that is, that is That's one of the, the reasons. That, that is, that, I mean, that, but yeah, that there's an obvious, because the go to Pakistan has become this regular yeah, cry yeah. of, uh, anyway, um, your take on this, the coverage, lack of coverage of this case, what are the political implications, Anand? I think that interview that was published in Kerala, that uh, um, was a kind of confession, confession, but uh, confession uh, bereft of other evidence is not an evidence. Yes, especially if it's done Uh, in custody. So it could be... Without a magistrate present. It could be guided by the same boastful spectacle that other terrorists Mm. uh, uh, indulge in. So uh, judge... But irrespective, it's not taken seriously in court, uh, no matter... Judge judge will... uh, So uh, the onus of providing the corroborative evidence... Was with the agency. uh, Was with the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs, NIA. Now, uh, there have been contradictory claims made by ex uh, means uh, former Home Secretaries. Now, G.K. Pillai's, mm. uh, the Home Secretary, said that he, uh, in 2015, that he was coaxed in a different direction by UPA government. Uh, and uh, the Home Secretary who followed him is now a minister in Modi government, R.K. Singh. Uh, R.K. Singh. Now, R.K. Singh then, then was uh, following the P. Chitambaram line that yes, it was a terror uh, mm. attack, um, but he uh, obviously now has a different line. Mm. So, uh, from the top, the Ministry of uh, Home, sec- and Secretaries to Ministry of Home, are uh, so confused about what approach the government of India should take while investigating in this. So, uh, that uh, on uh, across the governments, UPA plus NDA, so that gives you a hint of how the investigation has gone. Sure. Uh, that 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 is uh, one point. Second is uh, that uh, this uh, um, order can be challenged again. Right. Yeah. Ag- again, challenged. NIA NIA should go back uh, uh, challenging yeah, but, it. And say, but that really depends on because the NIA reports the central government, oh. and if the central government. Depends on how serious they are. For example, um, I read uh, this, was it this last week that Gujarat has denied permission to prosecute Banjara? Yeah. yeah express that they're not helping or they I mean. Yeah. Th- no, there's another, sorry, there's a serving police officer who's put Chokidar in his uh, Twitter bio and uh, he, because above a certain rank of police officer, you have to get the approval of the state government to, to, to question him or prosecute him and they haven't given that. Mm-hmm. So it really depends on yeah. how serious the government is because it does come because the the justice system while it is outside the purview deciding of deciding to pursue the case is the government's DIG jurisdiction to decide DIG level. Yeah. Raman sir I think when this incident happened hmm. NIA wasn't there hmm. Hmm. it was the case was with the CBI I see so they in fact uh, first of all this uh, the investigation had taken a lot of time they, they, they started arresting these people quite late secondly I mean Caravan, forget caravan. Caravan is not relevant in this story at all. Hmm. The story which is relevant uh, uh, is section 164 statement given by Asim Anand hmm. in front of the magistrate. Okay. And then One he section admitted- 164 statement is an, has an evidentiary value okay. in a court of law. Okay. Uh, so caravan doesn't stand at all. Hmm. I mean, and what did he say in front of the... He admitted... He admitted his uh, in the entire thing. He told that how he did it, mm. and he, he he said it in front of a magistrate. That and this evident. section one sixty four statement, which I think is one of my recommendation, mm. 
Ashish Khetan story, hmm. the cover story of uh, Tehelka. Hmm. He was the first one to break this. Okay, and I was uh, also with Tehelka at that time, hmm. uh, heading the investigations. So I remember that, and and that at that time when uh, the CBI had uh, you know started investigating that how it was leaked out the story. And Ashish Khetan was uh, in fact summoned to the Central uh, Bureau of Investigation. For I this see. story, uh, so and the se- third thing is, finally, when they found a line of investigation, and this guy sec- gave Section One Sixty Four statement, which is huge, and the investigator in an interview to the Indian Express recently, he said that the prosecution has bossed up the case. He is saying that he said it. I mean, two days ago, uh, Express report. Mm. He has said that. He said that we had the evidence and we just let them go. Yeah. So I mean, I do think this is a huge case, and like my pointed out, it's got hardly got any coverage, which is worrying, and that's worrying for democracy. Just the way um, news is completely compromised. But sorry, I uh, completely ignored Subha's question, and I will address it now. Uh, Subha, when he says I was aghast, how you brushed away the demand by Kashmiri newspapers mm. for newsprint, uh, for subsidized newsprint. I actually didn't brush it aside and I wasn't making a value judgment of whether they have the right to publish stuff that is anti-India, pro-India. Uh, if you remember, Subha, I had like clubbed this with the Assam case where uh, you know all the newspapers in Assam ran a blank page that they weren't getting any government ads. The point I was making was, and here I'm a compromised party to make a judgment call on this. I believe that the subscription model for news is the only model that will keep news honest. So I was saying it's kind of ironic that, um, uh, and it wasn't just unique to Kashmiri journals. I think no newspaper should get subsidies. Like, why the fuck should you get subsidies? Uh, But I was saying that it's ironic that you want a subsidy from the government and then you'll trash that government. I agree it's their right as of now because everybody gets subsidized newsprint, but I'm saying it's flawed fundamentally. So I'm not like kind of isolating Kashmiri newspapers for that. It's just that because they had gone on strike and the Assam newspapers had run that blank page for not getting ads, I was kind of plugging that all together that whether you're Assam, whether you're Delhi, whether you're... If you're expecting favors from the government, why would you trash the government? Yeah, yeah, there will be. I I tend to agree with you. I mean, I think think, uh, people should start paying for the news they want to consume. I actually, I'm a News Laundry subscriber and I subscribe you, to many man. other, uh, I, I pay annual subscriptions to newspapers around the world, to Indian websites that might want a subscription, um, including the caravan. Um, mm. So I do think that it's one thing for us to sort of sit there and say, oh, this is not happening and, you know, the government is intimidating or the government is putting pressure or so-and-so is, um, you know, going after a journalist. But I think this relationship has to end somewhere. It's an extremely complicated space. And the tragedy is, you know, everyone says that uh, the, the the trajectory of mainstream print media has been sort of on a downward spiral. Now, for the better part of the last 10, 12 years since the internet was, this free space opened up for people to share news and information and opinion. Mm. But the Trump election saw a, a bump in US newspaper subscription. Subscription apps. And, you know... It, so there, there clearly is a demand for mm. people. If there's no other way, they will, they will yeah. do that. So I think there's a lesson there if you're willing to learn the lesson. Yeah. So I wasn't like specifically saying Kashmiri newspapers don't have a right to that. But I was just commenting on the fundamental principle of it. I think is problematic. There is this email from Pranay. It says feedback about RSS and BJP polarizing India and deflecting from major issues. People at News Journal writing my second rant. I have been mulling over this for a long time. The fake outage over the rack in Christchurch in News Journal by Hindus triggered me to write this. This is a rant and nothing more. No intellectualization, no op-ed, no nuanced argument. And Pranay has gone on to completely trash who he calls Bhakts and Akhand Hindu Bharat Walas and Mandir Vahi Banayenge Walas. He says it's impossible trying to reason with them. They don't listen to reason. It's it's become at a stage where they are in their own bubble and no reality kind of sticks. And they they can justify anything. And it's basically just this long rant. So uh, yeah, um, Pranay, thank you for that. I I have read it. Um, I can't read out the whole thing. It's kind of long and it's, yeah, it's very angst-ridden. But Vidhi Parikh, thoughts on how US media looked at Pulwama attack and the Christchurch shooting. I had spoken last Hafta about how when the US attack, uh, when, when Pakistan attacks India, the US media 
takes kind of a very um, they don't sympathize with as much as with Pakistan and I've never understood why Madeleine Albright had called Pakistan a universal migraine Obama had said what keeps you up Pakistan keeps me up yet whether it was WAPO whether it was New York Times you saw the, the coverage is you know kind of pro Pakistan although I think everybody knows that Pakistan has terror hideouts and I couldn't understand why Vidhi has tried to kind of figure why that is she's in the current political environment the US media is up in arms against anything that Trump has ever espoused or favored there is a war like coverage of incidents of white supremacists against anybody rebellion in Syria and that's why you know this gets left around but but thank you Vidhi for your email she has a suggestion if there could be a link to the subscribers to write responses to an article or video that'll be good like I said Vidhi we're going to be getting a page where subscribers can actually interact with us um, hopefully that should be up soon then Abhishek Kumar has a suggestion about having more voices from the other side of the spectrum since Anand Ranganathan left he says I've been subscribed for close to two years and want to write for so long I really enjoy a podcast and look forward to listening to them I miss Anand Ranganathan a few weeks back on Abhinandan said on the that he won't be disclosing the events under which he left which I think is fair and rational however the reasons subscribe week asking is because they want a pro-right voice he says while it's ironic the path he has chosen I remember him saying on news laundry often that his son gets excited seeing Arnab stand up shouting in his show Arnab Angal Khade Ho Gai and I saw him doing the exact same thing in Arnab's show uh, the point is uh, news laundry has to have someone to fill that gap and void of opinion Mr. Vardhan believes more in voicing his opinion and then sitting back rather than debating it. <laughs> yes, that's nice. So he would like to see a, you know more representative voices. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll we'll you know try to get more. Um, and you have a feedback about subscribers and donors, and we should keep subscribers separate and donors separate. I don't quite agree with you for a variety of reasons, Abhishek. One is we're a private limited company. We can't have donors. You can only have subscribers and members. And the world over, the membership model is doing well, better than subscribers or donors. So we'll be kind of repositioning what what it means to be a subscriber or a, or, or a member of the News Laundry Club. And finally, Ayush Ayangar has general feedback and suggestion. He says, this podcast don't get updated. Uh, tech is not good enough. Well, they do on the, the browsers now, if you'll check, because we've just done a fix over the last week. The app, we'll have to make a completely new app, so don't look at that right now. And he says that, you know, I love podcasts and YouTube seems to be the medium for prosperity and sustenance. I mean, and I said that they are biased. He's talking about, you know, many other f- kind of, he's talking about Wire and others are biased. But I, he says, I see bias in Newsland as well. I've actually always said that everybody's biased. There's no one who's not biased. Um, you know, Ayush, it is impossible to be objective. And we've done a full podcast on it. I've done it. But I think we are individually biased. We try to ensure that News Laundry has all voices. So it is, uh, you'll have a few pieces that have, um, you know, in fact, we had one piece just before 2014 that was positioning Modi as this great savior written by Milind Mishra, I remember, and got so many shares and hits. We've had several pieces talk, saying good things about, you know, I said we have pieces trashing up. Um, what I said was that News Laundry will not have a uniform opinion. My point wasn't, you know, Maya's here, so if you want to count to me, f- feel free. On Swaraj, you will never have an anti-Modi piece. On why you'll never have a pro-Modi piece. So that's what I meant. There is a uniformity of the content you get there. And I was saying that we try not to do that. So I wasn't saying we're not biased. Every individual is biased, but it's an organization we try to represent all voices. Um, and uh, yeah, he says you should not be a media watchdog. You should do more than just media critique. So yeah, are you I think saying? we need a media watchdog. Right, I guess we do. So um, yeah, moving on. Um, now, if I could quickly get into some political kind of, you know, there's so many political headlines altogether. One is, of course, Congress's inability to strike up any alliance anywhere and fighting with everybody. Uh, is it arrogance or do they have no choice? I mean, they will have to sacrifice this election if they want to stay relevant yeah. for next election. Or is that the thought? Or is there no thought? I personally think there's no thought. Um, I tend to agree. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, this party in Kashmir that has been launched, hmm. Shah Faisal, and uh, Shaila Rashid has joined that party. Um, that is another th- political development. Uh, and uh, finally... There will be no election after the next one says that loony guy from BJP, that MP, what's his name? The guy with specs. Sakshi Maharaj, right? He said there will be no election after 2024. Yeah. And then... Uh, what does he say will happen after 2024? The, the election ban. Now, Nein, Modi. But what will then be the... Modi. Modi. It will huh. be dictatorship. Huh. He says who's joined BJP? Joined the BJP. Gautam right? has joined the BJP. Yeah. So very good. I was going to tell He's you such that. A so that's minute. happened as we're recording. Mm. And RSS leader Indresh Kumar, who we've also interviewed Indresh Kumar, right? When he, yeah, yeah. He, when walked he, he walked out of the interview with a very polite Amit. 
uh, atul sorry with atul i thought amit also interviewed him only atul okay he says that uh, pakistan really merged in india with 20 as if you guys aren't creating enough problem the last thing we need is pakistan to be part of our country <laughs> uh, but anyway so all these things have happened I- i'll just give you my take on this before we'll go to anand sir raman and then maya can come in i think this whole shah faisal thing in kashmir i'm going to be observing it very closely because uh, I-, i think anand was there as part of that or maybe he wrote a piece uh, because i have felt that launching a party among much because i had predicted those you know remember that party a whole bunch of iitians as if iitians are these yeah, special creatures yeah, yeah. who have descended on earth from a bunch of it they got so much of coverage i did they get like even half khud hi ladwad ke khatam ho gaye party and they had got so much new space this bunch of 100 iitians form a party it did jack shit another man who pelo so much gyan i just find it just very hard to keep my patience is that jayprakash narayan from uh, which city is in hyderabad Uh, ha 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 uh, janasena who, no no he was uh, a bureaucrat yeah uh, it's yeah. that whole yeah. j- j- um i forgot the name of party but anyway he'll uh, pelo just... gyan i have been with him on a few panels also and like he knows the best way to crack politics but himself other than that winning once he has not been win jack and he has been sitting on panels all his life i think a lot of people don't realize that to win an election no the janasena is somebody else no, no it's Mohinder something lok jan shakti or something it's called i yeah. forget what it's called this is I, so the lokpal he was you ha, know part ha, of the ha, right uh, i'm curious to see what this fa fez uh, fezel is his name right and and cuz even they are in my view more uh, uh, you know twitter stars and and panel stars and to win an election it is a on ground game and and i think kejriwal proved that while all the studios are trashing him he went out in 167 you know political commentators like tavleen singh were saying he's finished after he resigned a sad end a pathetic end to ye to khatam hai to clearly panels and twitter does not make your party win uh, and i have a sneaky suspicion something like that is going to happen to these guys i mean i don't know i think it's good if kashmir has more political views but i think when you become a, and so this morning on the bbc i was watching this news report it's this new party run as the headline says in washington post a political party in thailand led by athletic billionaire uh-huh. it's called the future forward party thanath horns and this athletic led billionaire for all his billionaire billionaires in the interview he was telling the bbc reporter was saying that you know you get a lot of selfies where he goes people want to get selfies he's a good looking guy he's a billionaire he's launching a political party he says you have become a real star on twitter and instagram and all so he says actually uh, social media can make you a star but to win election you have to win votes and the two are not connected and i thought yeah he said that i was like chalo he he's figured that out if only jayprakash narayan and our iitians in india had figured that out they would not make such a hoo ha about <laughs> about that thing sorry uh, anand come in just you can comment on up on this on these new parties launched and will india have an election no, in 2024 no that was already a conspiracy theory by opposition parties even in kejriwal in calcutta really said that uh, after 2019 they are not going to allow any elections and now the rss is <laughs> endorsing that view no, uh, uh, whether he might have meant it as a metaphor that it would be such a andhi that after that uh, everyone would give him universal approval mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway uh, i coming to saf hazel i think uh, he uh, he would add an um, a new player to kashmiri political scene whether that would be a new voice i don't know because to operate within indian electoral system within indian constitution y- y- there are already say pdp is already extreme kind of uh, they, they, sometimes they say extreme kind of things that kind of things you will say so you will be a new player but whether you what kind of new voice you would be i i don't know because even extreme opinions are being voiced but if you are a serious contender to power in kashmir you, you will have to follow that centrist line means uh, hmm. you will have to come within flirt, the fr- flirt with <laughs> the elements of separatism uh, at the same time same the within the constitutional yes. framework so, of elections so, so, second is um, he was uh, in indian indian administrative service he has resigned from it he for a brief period of time he was a kind of youth icon in kashmir because he became the first uh, man from a uh, first person from kashmir to top civil services examination uh, but not for a long time 
uh, I, a group of uh, Kashmiri students who are given a scholarship in Jamia Millia mm. and they come to private institutes for civil services coaching, a group of 12 of them came to me also. To, and uh, two of them, uh, two three of them also got into civil services. So uh, when I was teaching, they used to say that uh, um, uh, he was a kind of uh, uh, parachute bureaucrat in Kashmir. After joining um, Indian civil services, he was always away. He went to U do some degree mm. in U.S. I think Harvard or something. I think. Or Europe, uh, mm. maybe. He was on a sabbatical. Yes. He was on so, a, so, uh, he, uh, so uh, though he was an entrant and he he got the Jammu and Kashmir cadre, uh, cadre, but he in, never worked very hard in Kashmir to have that bureaucratic capital of converting it into political capital. Right. So, because so some bureaucrats, <laughs> when they go as DM, actually yeah. you go to the the district. Hmm. And those people swear by that. Uh -huh, guy. They are yeah. worshipped. They are worshipped. Yeah. Yes. But I don't know if he has that yeah. kind of a following yeah. in Kashmir. Yes. Yeah, I think Shah Faisal is going to have a tough, tough time, because I think the the sort of polity of Kashmir right now is also so divided amongst itself. Um, have Shaf you made any trips to Kashmir recently? Not in the last. No, not in the last year actually, but um, I was going regularly mm. before that. He used to go. And I think. The sense I get is that he's not sure who he wants to target, who who he wants as his own support base. He may have his heart in the right place. People may see that he wants to effect some kind of change. But he's, you know, this, this crossover politician has to be very clear about who they want as their core constituency. And I don't think he has that because uh, even more complicated in, in a divided polity, because in the mm. last four years, you've seen most uh, even sort of centrists in Kashmir uh, say that they can't support what what New Delhi has been doing sure. in terms of a, a national policy um, and that gives them very little room to maneuver so that's not Shah Faisal's constituency um, the separatists who become even more hardline are not Shah Faisal's yeah. constituency so where does that leave him really? so where does that leave him yeah I think you know? I mean he, he would probably win an election in Delhi he would win an election <laughs> in Delhi yeah <laughs> probably not necessarily in not Kashmir. necessarily in Kashmir but yeah that's the but that statement uh, sir you want to weigh in on Shah Faisal or these yeah, parties, I, like I, IIT parties, no, no, and these. I'm, I'm more optimistic on these hmm. things because I'm so much fed up with the existing <laughs> parties. <laughs> so anybody who comes new is refreshing. Uh, uh, yeah, is very refreshing. And and having worked in Kashmir, uh, you know, for the I was I was placed there. So hmm. there's six seats in Jammu and Kashmir, and out of which I think Kashmir is two. And if you look at the community, it's very, very well uh, knit. And the number of votes that, uh, you know, yeah. get polled, mm. just 5% or 10% or 20%. Mm. Actually, the polling so, percentage uh, is very low. It's so low. So you never know. I mean, That's if this guy has, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, has got uh, some plan for it. Because mm. I don't think we can read him right now because he hasn't opened up. Excepting the fact that Sahila has joined him. Right. So I don't, we don't know much about, uh, you know, their political strategy. And it's very interesting because both of them were actually tipped to join the national conference at mm. some point in time. And then, you know, what happened to those talks? Um, let's see. I mean, this, uh, to that extent, yes, I think, you know, the Ahmadmi party in Delhi has shown us what a new entrant can do uh, mm. on the political scene. Yeah, so what, my point is that uh, he may have uh, maybe be successful uh, winning two three seats but he is not a new voice he's a new player Means the, he voices we have he's not getting a new perspective <laughs> on the yeah, table yeah. Yeah. like yeah that's that's true no but what i am trying to say that we don't even know what his perspe perspective is okay. he, he hasn't opened up we don't he hasn't know opened up, so. i mean his only claim to fame right ah. now is he top ah. the services and right. he was pretty vocal and, on Kashmir. And as, as somebody who was part of the central establishment, he has taken a stand he up, against... Yeah, he took a position. Against, uh, yeah, uh, just coming to the Sakshi Maharaj's statement, it says, quote, the Modi tsunami, of course, you must say this in Hindi, there's a translation. Quote, the Modi tsunami has awakened the country. I feel there will be no election in 2024. This is the only election we are fighting in the name of the country with full honesty, unquote. So I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> So yeah, yeah it probably question. means nothing. So I think it was just made a headline. Because I mean, there will be no election because 
there will be an autocratic ruler there will be no election because we won't be a democracy there will be no election because we are I, what what does he mean i have no idea like what this he is. will not exist i mean what it could be anything <laughs> it could, yeah, he it didn't put so much thought as it, as people as, he tends as not people to. are dissecting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. they I mean said um, these are means one of the worst arguments to attack <laughs> low hanging fruits and it's such slug fest you will see a lot uh, of arguments like this in the true. election season <laughs> so um, uh, coming to the congress is their position thought out see one of course if one wants to defend the congress they could say that of course they will drive a tough bargain but because if they don't by 2024 they will be irrelevant yeah so even if that means that they say that okay right now we will not back down from up or delhi or bengal we will contest election and use this time to strengthen our base and our on ground game it is understandable i don't think that is a thought through position because that position has to be accompanied by major on ground mobilization and that has to be done under some campaign whether it is maybe chokidar or chalo pi chai chalo coffee piye chalo snacks khaye chalo hum lokpal laenge like arvind used to do in really every mohalla i mean i've seen whether it is 10 people there or 100 people there but it 30 meetings a day every every little mohalla you go to so i i are your leaders doing that i believe the leaders aren't capable of doing that because most of them would faint on day one <laughs> i think i remember when uh, once when the up was in power and uh, this one montek and um, chidambaram had to go for an on ground jaisa because they were being trashed that you know yavatmal that time the whole farmer distress had reached uh, and they must have maybe spent an hour to how long would they have spent hey car bhi aise hogi jab bite le rahe the na unki aise hawaiyan udi thi i thought it faint any minute ek to us pagdi mein itni garmi lag rahi hogi montek ko ऊपर से चिदम्बरम पता नहीं था घुमा होगा जिंदगी में कि नहीं तो वो मुझे लगा था अभी गिरा ये तो बड़ी मुश्किल से वैसे हवा से निकली तो आई डोंट थिंक द लीडरशिप ऑफ द कांग्रेस केपेबल ऑफ डूइंग दैट इन द समर नाउ इफ यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट एंड यू आर जस्ट grand standing then you're fucked yeah not just that there's also i think a, a level of arrogance that crept in after the assembly election results i mean let's not forget that they won these apart from chatisgarh what were the margins they were really really narrow like 0.2% point you know they were mm. not even no not even 1% the margins but it i i understand that it gives you a boost you feel mm. more sort of um, uh, energetic about the campaign but you can't rest on the laurels of these assembly elections and i feel that that arrogance creeps into the congress party leadership very quickly and i think that's fundamentally a problem a that and that's what's driving this we will not be in an alliance with so and so we will not mm. do this we will not do that because frankly what position is in the Cong- is the congress party in to Other make these conditions to put yeah. down these conditions Yeah. They need they need alliances and if they don't see that the opposition needs to come together uh and they are the second player in this opposition. Hmm. Then I think, you know, then Sakshi Maharaj may be right. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> no. And also if I mean Mr. Modi and Shah aren't exactly known for their humility, but they have the phenomenal ability that many bureaucrats have of being able to eat crow and grovel when you need to yeah they can do that very well but i said arrogance it's, no it's, it's, but these guys don't have that also anyway That's you want to win on this for we move on no no as my was uh, rightly pointing out that they won the assembly elections two major states by the skin of the teeth hmm. mm. uh, there were very close fights the, uh, only chatisgarh was a convincing victory so uh, that is, and uh, ideally after these three assembly wins the momentum should be be with them and the allies would want to associate themselves with them but they have not ma- they have now been imagining themselves as a vote katua party mm. means uh, how uh, they how, cut the other person how, mm. how 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 the third being the third player and uh, somehow take away from bjp uh, they are not very confident about their organizational strength which has been in shambles for last decade uh, uh, and Uh, um, as you rightly said that uh, um, uh, to match uh, the cadre strength of uh, bjp they would need a some uh, some total of strengths uh, from uh, yeah. the, the regional allies and uh, their own and that w- can stand bjp's cadre strength if, if uh, uh, the fight is uh, neck to neck 
if that is not then anyway that's another case but if it is neck to neck um, the uh, carder mobilization matters a lot taking the voter to the booth so uh, in that uh, if they don't uh, supplement their own weak organization with uh, the organization of regional allies then it's uh, it's they are more in post poll calculations that yeah and look i mean any my any of my students uh, mm. who are you know out on the field reporting election stories will tell you that just cutting the bjp's vote is not enough i mean you will cut it and mm. fragment the opposition vote further who is that going to benefit at the end of the day it doesn't really i i don't know what their strategy is and i think they're really unclear thank no, you i sir. think uh, the optimist say congress, speaks congress is in a dilemma uh definitely the decay has set in hmm. the congress i mean i think at the time of independence when they were talking about dissolving it i think it is automatically getting dissolved, dissolved now right okay uh but having said that uh, if congress goes for all these kinds of alliances i think they are openly Accepting declaring op- openly openly declaring that they have been reduced to a regional party hmm. because the kind of alliances that hmm. were offered to them okay so uh i feel that the decay has set in but de- b- uh, but i still feel that they will be able to get 80 to 100 seats uh all over yeah. i mean they are going to improve yeah they'll improve from their, uh, their i agree with that and also in the up uh in up why it did not happen if you look at the 2014 results in 40 odd seats uh bj uh, bsp and sp hmm. they were number 2 Mm. and and or either they won it or they were number 2 or uh in 27 seats the bjp was number 2 mm. right uh, bjp bjp had a lead sorry uh, not number 2 i mean in terms of the share of votes for more right after i mean if we if, if we uh, include uh, bsp and sp mm. bjp is still leading in over them you know in okay. 27 seats i see and 10 and 11 seats are with the congress so with prenka coming in they are thinking that they will be Sorry, able to let's mobilize. see i think amethi i believe last time also rahul won because last minute varun gandhi gave a statement that was sympathetic to him i mean he could very well if he lose amethi it will be a huge blow and i think bjp will do all they can to make him lose amethi because that would that would be a knockout punch i think for him as a polit- politician i don't think he has the gumption to to come back from something like that um now quickly i just want to comment on this mai bhi chaukidar campaign our song is also associated with that hmm. we've started a mai bhi dhobi campaign news laundry so if you're a subscriber to news laundry you can do hashtag mai bhi dhobi because all the chaukidars keep us safe dhobis have to keep our news clean and that can only be done when the public pays because when the public pays the public is served when advertisers pay advertisers are served please pay to keep news free those of you who are listening to do this for free and this episode is free because it's holy and it's a holy gift usually it's behind a paywall do consider subscribing to news laundry because unless you pay journalism will die you cannot leave it to advertisers and government subsidies that is no way for news to talk truth to power so do consider um, subscribing and i also want to just briefly talk about and then i'll you know leave it open to if anyone wants to talk about something that i may have left out last week the day after we recorded that bridge over bridge collapsed mm-hmm. in mumbai um so the coverage of that i thought was ridiculous um the kind of fights and the tutu meme that was happening i i was blown away um but and it seemed like for one day that would become a political issue but the only casualty of that was sanju verma uh, who is in any case i i i think she's borderline sane because i don't believe a normal person can talk like that and i've said this for the longest time so yeah uh, so it was big news very unfortunate i think six people died but i definitely think um you know if if you know one talks about delhi news or there are these random acts that happen in parts outside delhi also which take on this prime time national character which are go into a different zone and i couldn't quite figure out why again i'm not saying people dying is okay i'm just saying when the criticism is of daily news is delhi news that was not an incident that needed to be so big and hysterical that six channels prime time four hours um comments panel and then we can close um i think in the absence of local news networks that 
you know particularly uh, uh, in english um channels that are based out of bombay would probably feel the need to cover mm-hmm. something like that uh, greater but i you know broadly i think this goes down to sort of editorial decision making in newsrooms uh, we've lost sight in a 24 hour news cycle uh, many of us have lost sight of what is nationally important what is locally important what is important for us for a little bit of time in the middle of the day or the evening um what is prime time worthy i think you know we're all in such a mess mm. as far as just this decision making uh, structure is concerned that of course this is going to go and uh, be uh, national news it's unfortunate but frankly the foot over bridge collapse in mumbai is a local news story mm. it's not a national news story just as something happening in delhi would not be relevant to bombay audiences or uh, I, i get no. i get no no I, I, something like this i get calls from you know the rwa where i live for mm. example they came up to me the other day and they said can you please help pass because you know journalists are supposedly the saviors of mm. you know so- societies in crisis what can what is the problem that the delhi metro that goes under our homes uh, it creates a lot of noise it goes at very fast speed so because there is a small gap between these two stations can they go at a slower speed that would so i looked at him and i said why don't you write to the metro corporation um no but can't you do something in the news and i said mm. unfortunately no but unfortunately a lot of news stories do become big like this because i know for a fact many editors take up something because this, someone told them if you're in the position of power they make a big deal but out of front like, page story it's like the, this, this went power of one has gone viral i mean yeah. the one that we did Huh, that is boy huh no no yeah, but it's but like the rtr in vasant vihar right mm. i mean why is that of national importance is what mm. i want to know mm. no mm. i think i think this bridge collapse was a local news of international importance not even national really okay. why yes because i i have been metro editor with the express huh. mm. and uh, metro editor with pioneer also mm. and i have seen i uh, always used to pounce over i mean these civic issues sometimes become very big and here the eight people i think not six at the tally mm. went up to eight mm. and uh, a story of like like this if you just do the reconstruction uh-huh. uh, this is what was lacking in the media mm. i mean nobody did a proper reconstruction of this bridge but and i think i don't know i mean i think civic issues are important yes but it has to be taken from beyond the footbridge to a bigger you know you have to come from the micro to the macro that how many footbridges are what made makes what it is the allocation how Just much money was spent this footbridge and going on about this footbridge yeah, right. no, no, does it it doesn't go from small to big that this is one this is the allocation uh, this is how yeah, much money spent you do same that. thing in public health reporting yeah the whole thing about the deaths in gorakhpur you bash you know but swami what happened? bisht whatever yeah. his name is for like one week but ajay bisht ajay bisht uh, uh, how many you know how many such cases are there across up right. what is so, the allocation i'm not saying civic issues are not important of course they're important and people will actually i mean the 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 huge power of a local news network if you if if you ever travel to the united states and hmm, the city every it. city over there has a really prominent local news network which is giving you everything you need to know about where you live uh but those experiments have not worked here as well in television for some reason i think the money is just uh not coming in mm-hmm. but so, yes yeah, so so in the absence of that local news space civic issues are important but you have to be able to give it the bigger context otherwise what that's what relevant? i'm saying so that it wasn't reported the way it should have right, been right right and for that matter uh, this uh, the rape uh, of that woman in delhi nirbhaya nirbhaya Mm. It, became it became international it became international yeah so so it, the way you reported that matters, that matters. a lot okay. you want to win no, yes i mean i think binaries uh, in civic is- issues uh, you have a punching uh, body civic body and col- collapse uh, now a regular road accident may might have also killed six people but then th- that is the banality of accident that six people died mm. but here there is a, a punching bag and there's an institution c- civic involved. authority it's a public authority and y- you can target that that banner is also important uh, but uh, uh, just like crimes as raman sir pointed out that nirbhaya now it caught to the national outrage because uh, of how it was projected 
at the graphic details if you go to the police diary of a lot of heinous crimes the details are same mm. Mm. means uh, uh, rapes, uh, rapes are very horrific experiences and the, the gruesome detailing yeah. but uh, that caught because of the detailing because mm. of the it horror of the it yes, yes. 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 so uh, um, now uh, yesterday only eight people died uh, after being drowned in a uh, um, canal in bihar no mm. nobody knows nobody knows mm. a, a canal a, in fact it was also uh, pinned down to the negligence of the irrigation department authorities mm-hmm. but uh, okay eight people died but yes metropolis has that uh, locational advantage of being uh, the mishaps being highlighted many okay. such news in fact three children they went in uh, to looking for their cricket ball you know it, hmm. in greater noida hmm. uh, so they oh, got yeah. like wahan uh, burnt they got electrocuted, electrocuted. yeah so that so um, i mean speaking of jyoti singh's rape uh, who is called nirbhaya um, hmm. is a netflix series has come out and uh, i i'm amazed at the kind of positive reviews it's got i happen to catch two episodes they had a special screening here it is such a shitty series it's a pr job for the delhi police basically because neeraj kumar is the consultant on that editor and he is the one who got the director access it is uh, i mean you can hear my detailed review rant on the awful and awesome entertainment rap but uh, yeah i mean since you brought that up i was just saying that that got such imagination that netflix says that we only take quality content above a certain quality otherwise send it to amazon prime if they believe this is of a quality then obviously netflix is things have come down but it's 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 terrible um and i think it's terrible a it's badly executed it's terrible performances the script is like amateur dramatics but more than that that they've taken the rape and murder of this child this girl into a pr plug for the delhi police made me so angry while watching that shit series uh and one everyone's given great reviews i don't know where the fuck i don't know what the fuck they were watching anyway and one more thing mm. why uh, this bridge collapse could have been uh, you know a local story mm. of international importance bmc is the richest municipality yeah. of yeah. the exactly. world and rich by so, a factor uh, so, of so so if mm. you project the story that way i think it will okay so um we're going to wind up now we'll give you the um, recommendations of our panel but one piece of news which we haven't discussed but we will discuss it next time is that a lokpal seems all set to be appointed before this election uh, we'll do a detailed piece on this what is this lokpal what are its powers and what was the recommended bill that the movement had recommended and does this lokpal have any powers and lady a profile of the people Hmm. who are part of it because I haven't seen that anywhere and um, uh, the Mevhi Chaukidar campaign of course we'll have a song dedicated to that <laughs> all the ministers cabinet ministers have put Mevhi Chaukidar Nitin Gatkari Mevhi Chaukidar whatever Nirmal Sitaram and sub- everyone's Mevhi Chaukidar uh, you can if you're a subscriber and you support independent media you can say Mevhi Dhobi because we keep stuff clean so on that note uh, let's have recommendations for the week uh, so let me start with you uh, we did an interview uh, with Sahila Uh, in news laundry hmm. so i think i would nidhi has done nidhi has only done it that yes so by you were asking where she is well uh, there she so is it's, it's she a is a very good interview hmm. and uh, this is one and second i think uh, that story by ashish khetan hmm. on asimanand it's good time uh, it to revisit it good time to revisit it was a beautiful story hmm. it was on section 164 statement <laughs> by i see hmm. um i'm going to recommend this little book called on tyranny by Timothy Snyder it's uh, 20 lessons from the 20th century and they're really short like one page essays um i'm just going to read out the introduction to chapter 3 which is beware the one party state the parties that remained states and suppressed rivals were not omnipotent from the start they exploited a historic moment to make political life impossible for their opponents to so support the multi party system and defend the rules of democratic elections vote in local and state elections while you can consider running for office that's one of the things that yes, i want to recommend and those of you who are regular listeners of hafta would remember that i had recommended this book a oh, long time ago and i highly recommend because he's written it keeping trump in mind but it applies to so many people you and i know closely around the world yeah <laughs> yeah anand okay uh, i two recommendations first is uh, pronorize pronorize book uh, mm. the verdict i think uh, i always thought that mr roy uh, wears his scholarship lightly in tv studios Um, and uh, i think uh, that was a loss to a scholarship when he moved to broadcasting mm. because uh, from academics like uh, 
Rajni Kothari and uh, CSDS which he founded he uh, they were academic uh, cepho- uh, election studies but cephalology the main streaming of cephalology was uh, somehow uh, that was his achievement, Roy's achievement, along with uh, Sir Butler, um, the, uh, who coined the very term cephalosy, and uh, Ashok Lahiri. So the book is good because it, uh, mm, uh, the, with a lot of uh, uh, shallow polling and shallow election studies, it uh, the good uh, good election studies are needed to drive out the bad ones. Mm. So uh, it uh, combines rigor with uh, accessibility and uh, has a lot of data regarding the demographics of uh, electorate and uh, uh, the changing trends, what are the continuities also. So uh, I have written a review, you can read why I recommend it. Second is uh, a piece of, uh, again related to election, Uh, it is a piece of satire about, uh, you will see a lot in this election, parachute candidates Mm. who somehow parachute uh, into a constituency to uh, fight an election. So it's a piece of satire by one of leading Hindi satirists, uh, Harishankar so he says that uh, how these people decide that I will contest election. So it is just like uh, they say that उन्होंने जनता की आवाज सुन ली है. तो ये वैसे ही हुआ कि जैसे मेमना ने चिलाया माँ और आ गया भेड़िया. So so then why they how they explain that uh, um, I have heard your voice? Then said नहीं आपने नहीं बुलाया था आपकी हृदय की आवाज में नहीं सुनी. <laughs> so, so much a dog whistle that's hot whistle <laughs> my recommendations are two and like a lawyer I will say please read this in correlation to para so and so it's uh, an NPR podcast called Hidden Brain it's why partisanship changes how people react to non-controversial statements and gives an example of how a statement that is by let's say Trump is told to you and you of course is the American context and you say who do you think said it and they say you know what a wonderful thing it was Kennedy or someone and then later when it's told that it's Trump how it changes how you engage with that statement yeah. so how partisanship actually deeply impacts how we perceive you know vanilla things I mean I think it's an interesting I don't agree with everything it says but it's an interesting kind of insight and way to critically look at one's own Responses, reactions yeah. and if one was to uh, t- see this in context of this uh, podcast from February it's called One Head Two Brains how the brain's hemisphere shape the world we see. And it talks about people who are, you know, it is a thesis of this psychiatrist that people who are left-brained tend to see the details because the left brain is more into detailing and the right brain sees a bigger picture. And uh, we are in a left brain world. And I I kind of see a certain similarity in people who believe in a certain ideology being left-brained and people who believe in a certain ideology being right-brained. And it's an interesting kind of two podcasts that I, I highly recommend. So on that note, thank you, Maya. Thank uh, you. For coming on the Hafta. Pleasure to listen to your insights. Um, do come again. Anytime. We hope to see you at the Media Rumble. That too. Yes. And um, the rest of you do subscribe to News Laundry. In case you listen to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes or anywhere else, we are newslaundry.com and you can subscribe to us because we don't take advertisements and we have reports, we have podcasts, we have video shows, we have a lot of stuff. And we need you to survive and grow and thrive because when the public pays, the public is served. So do subscribe to newslearning.com. And if you're one of those who's changed their Twitter handle to maybe Chokidar uh, and some such stuff, and if you subscribe to News Laundry, you can change it to maybe Dhobi. Uh, we leave you with this song, but before that, Awful and Awesome Entertainment Rap will have its own channel. It will not be available on this channel going forward. So do subscribe to the Awful and Awesome Entertainment Rap on whichever podcast platform you listen to your podcast. And also check out our daily podcast, Daily Dose, which gives you news wrap for the day. And we leave you with this song until next week. Bye-bye. Have fun. News Laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. 
catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel.